Today, let's talk about sound a little. I think most of you probably know that sound travels waves, but do you know what a wave is? I know you've probably seen waves on water or maybe waves on a string. Sound waves are a little different. Sound waves are what we call longitudinal waves, and longitudinal waves travel from my mouth to your ear by the, the molecules in a medium, typically air, but it could be water or solid just as easily. And what happens is when the vocal cords in my mouth move, air molecules near the vocal cords are, are bumped by the vocal cords. Those molecules in turn bump into other molecules all the way across the room until an air molecule next to your eardrum bumps into your eardrum and that's how you hear it. And all of those bumping, all of that bumping going on is what we call the sound wave. So you might wonder what would happen in space where there is almost no air. I think NASA says there's, there's about one molecule of something every square centimeter or something. We can consider that to be empty. So there's no molecules to bump into each other. And if there's no molecules to bump into each other, there's no way for the wave to travel. So if, if imagine for a moment that, it, that uh, we wouldn't die from suffocation, if we were in space, no air, and I was talking, you wouldn't be able to hear me. You'd see my mouth moving, but you wouldn't be able to hear me. And to prove that to you, I'm gonna use this bell. As you see, when I turn this on, you can hear the bell. What's happening is the hammer, there's a little electric motor that's making this hammer strike the bell, and that makes the bell vibrate. It makes it move back and forth. And as it does that, it bumps into those air molecules, travels across the room into, this, into the microphone on the camera. And that's how you're hearing it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on, it won't fall over. I'm going to put it in this jar. Now this jar is blocking the air molecules that are bumped by the bell. But as that sound waves, as those air molecules bump into the inside of the bell jar, they make the bell jar vibrate. Not very much because it's big and thick and heavy, and that's why it's quieter now. But that bell jar then bumps into air molecules on the outside and the wave travels to the microphone. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pump most of the air out of this bell jar. I'm turning on my pump. All right, you can watch the gauge here and you'll see the air is being pumped out of the jar. We're down to about five inches of mercury is where we'll stop it. Now the bell inside is still vibrating. If you were closely and zoom in, you might be able to see the hammer still striking it. I'm going to give it a few more seconds here. We want to get as much air out as possible. I think that's probably good. All right, now, you can probably still hear that. Of course, what's happening is that the plastic that the bell is mounted to is touching the base of my jar. And so vibrations, the jar is still vibrating. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close the valve, and then I'm going to take the hose off. What I've done is I've suspended the bell from some strings. There we go. I'm going to very carefully turn it upside down. Now, the bell isn't touching the jar. It's only, it's being held by strings. So those strings are touching the jar. There's some vibrations that are going through the strings. But there's, that's very, very little energy is traveled that way. I'm gonna be very quiet. Hopefully you can hear that. I'm very close, so I can hear it just a little bit. That's because we didn't pump all the air out of the jar. My pump's not that good. And as I said, there's a little bit of vibration going through that string, but you'll notice it's much quieter. I'm going to hold it as close as I can here. Hopefully you can still see that hammer moving. So now you know that there would be no sound in space. The inside of this jar is like space or very close to space. And there are no sound waves that you can hear. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to very slowly let the air back in.
where it goes back into the jar, more sound is getting out. started. There's just as much air in the jar as there is outside, and so some of the sound is striking the bell and the, the bell jar, and then you can hear it. Now you'll really be able to hear it. The sound waves travel directly to the microphone. So now you know what a bell would sound like in space.